So I'm in Inkscape, which is a free vector software tool, and it can be a little bit intimidating when you first load in your first object, and maybe you want to change the color. So in this case, I've got a black arrow. Now I've got a bunch of menus along the left, a bunch of menus on the top, a bunch of menus down at the bottom and on the side. If you want to change a vector, a color of a vector, it's really easy to do. Now this is a vector, and the reason I know it's a vector, which is a scalable vector graphic, is when I select on the left hand side, the second arrow down, it says edit paths by node. And when I select that, you're going to see all these little nodes. And that's what really what a vector is, it's just a mathematical formula with a bunch of individual vectors. So this is a vector. If I want to change the color of a vector in Inkscape, it's super, super easy. Down at the bottom, there's a huge color palette. And you can just click any color, and it will just instantly change the color of the vector. Now I can actually scroll along, there's more if you scroll it to the right, just underneath the color bar, there's a whole bunch of different colors, it just goes on and on and on. And you can make the color anything you like. Now of course, to export it down on the right hand side here, about five down, there's a little option here to say export this document as a PNG. So very, very easy to change for a vector. Okay, so that's great about a vector. But what happens if you have a PNG file? So here's my PNG file that I'm working with, and it's not a vector. When I click on the second arrow down, edit paths by node, nothing comes up. And that makes sense because this is just a straight up image file. It's a PNG extension, it's just an image. So how do I change the color of a PNG file? Well, I'm gonna go up to the filters option, and I'm gonna go to color, which is the fourth one down, and I'm going to go to colorize. And when that happens, you have two options at the top. You have an options option, I guess, and a color option. Now I go to the color option, and then I've got a whole bunch of different little sub options. I like the wheel personally. The wheel to me is very intuitive. I can just select any color inside the wheel. So maybe I want like a really nice red. You can also use the hex colors if you've got those. And then I'll just click apply. And now it just makes the color of the arrow. Now I do want to point out if you don't like that color and you want to change it again. So let's say I want to do make this green now. Okay. What I need to do is go to, instead of going to colorize and going to the wheel, I need to undo this and get it back to the baseline color of, of uh, black. Now I can go in, I can go to filters, color, colorize, and maybe I want to make it green for example. So I'll scroll this thing around right like that, and I'll make this green, and I'll click apply. If I try to make this without going back to black, what'll happen is it'll screw it, screw it up. So let's say I wanted to make it blue. So I'm doing this the wrong way now. Let's say I wanted to make this blue, and I click apply. It, the filters are sometimes cumulative. So there, that one's blue. Now I'm gonna go to pink, I'll click apply, and you'll see it kind of just disappears after a while. It, it keeps putting the filter on top of the filter. So you can hit control Z to undo it. And then you can get it right back to where you were at originally. So I personally try to get everything starting in black and then I can filterize it off of that. Hope you guys found that helpful. Quick walkthrough for both an image and a vector if you're trying to change the color, which can uh, be a little bit frustrating sometimes. Hope you found that helpful guys. Thanks a lot.